My name is Rissa Jackson, and I'm here to talk to you about tapping into the power of junior developers. We're going to talk about who am I and why am I talking to you about this, uh, why you should hire junior developers, how you can support them and set, set them up for success, what the curse of knowledge is and how that relates, uh, how to be the senior you wish you had, how it can go wrong, you know, the juniors don't work out, uh, my tips for juniors, and how to keep in touch. So who am I? I'm Rissa Jackson. Uh, I was born in Taiwan. I teach partner acrobatics, and I'm located in Austin, Texas. Sam, yesterday when you were talking about Aggies and Longhorns, I got those jokes. Uh, so thanks for putting them in just for me. Um, as far as the Marmite versus Vegemite uh, debate, I don't have a side, so I'm open to bribes. <laughs> Um, Tim, for you, I included a pupper. Pupper tax has been paid. Um, this is not my dog. Uh, it found me, and I'm looking for a home for it, so if you would like to adopt it, let me know. <laughs> All right. Um, I was very inspired by Nina's talk earlier today, and I really strongly believed when I was younger, tech is not for me. Um, when I thought about the type of person who was in tech, it didn't look like me, it didn't sound like me, they were very good at math, they were just on another level, a level that I couldn't reach. And I felt that way for a very long time, until I met my partner, Rooney, who was a developer, and he said, you should try it. And I thought, nah, that's not really for me, come on. But then I saw his life, and I was like, wow, that life looks awesome. You can travel, you can work remotely. This is incredible. OK, OK, I, I got to try it. So I did some classes and uh, found out that it is for me. Um, I got my first tech job in uh, 2020, my first developer job. And I'm very sorry to my partner. He warned me it would take me a long time to get a remote job. He had to wait a long time. but. <laughs> starting in 2020 meant my first job was remote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, currently, I'm a full stack software engineer at Loop. And um, I did, as uh, Michael mentioned, a talk on Git Interactive Rebase at Laracon Online. I got to do my first keynote talk at Longhorn PHP. And right now, it's happening. I am doing my first international conference. So. <laughs> So tech is for me, and I'm happy to be here. But I am an early career developer, and it was a, it was a journey to get here. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Before I talk about the journey, let's talk about why you should hire junior developers, why you should care, and why this is useful to you. So we're going to talk about how diversity helps your company. We're going to talk about how they bring fresh perspectives and passion. We're going to talk about how mentorship benefits everyone. We're going to talk about how they'll ask forbidden questions, what falling into gaps means and why that's a good thing, and uh, how we can create great seniors. There's a lot of data that shows that companies that have more diversity do better financially. And this is for both um, ethnic diversity and gender diversity. Both of these are useful. And when we look at our field, especially when we get to the more experienced levels, it's not very diverse right now. It's a little bit homogenous. And that's changing, of course, but it's still a little bit that way. But when we look at the junior level, uh, this 60% is white cis men. But when we get to the 12, the 22, and the 6%, we have um, POC cis men, we have white marginalized genders, and we have POC marginalized genders. So if we want to increase diversity in our companies, Hiring junior developers is a really great way to do that. They bring fresh perspective and passion. Uh, there's a fantastic quote um, from Grace Hopper that I really love. The most dangerous phrase in the language is, we've always done it this way. You know who hasn't always done it this way? Junior developers. They haven't always done it this way at your company, and they haven't always done it this way in this field. They're new, they're ready to try new things, and that's something that we can tap into when we hire them. 
Now, sometimes junior developers will come up with ideas and you hear it and you scoff because they've already, you've already had this conversation. You've talked about this idea. It didn't work. Let's just move on. However, what if instead we try it again? Things change. There's a variety of reasons why something didn't work the first time. Maybe there wasn't the right people in place. Maybe there wasn't enough passion and energy. Or maybe your company has changed. Your team has changed. Companies have to change. They'll change because of how long they exist. They'll change because of how big they get when they change sizes. Whatever got that company here today might not be what you need to get to the next stage. And so it's really great opportunity to try some of the things again. Get the junior uh, involved in this so that they can try it with you. And maybe with their energy and excitement, maybe this time it'll work. All right, mentors. We'll talk later about how mentors specifically help junior developers, but let's just talk about how mentors help everyone. Honestly, everyone should have a mentor and everyone should be a mentee. Uh, mentorship is, creates the ability to share best practices. It reinforces mentors' knowledge. One of the best ways to really know something is to teach it to someone else. It brings fresh ideas to the mentors, uh, particularly from junior developers. If they've gone to a boot camp or they're learning from tutorials, they might be working with newer technology, newer languages, newer frameworks that they're excited to try. You know, Maybe they're working in Rust and they want to try it with you. Maybe you're a senior who's like, I haven't tried it yet, but here's an opportunity. You can learn together. It fosters collaboration. It breaks down knowledge silos. Uh, we've talked about the bus factor. Um, that's a little bit morbid. So we'll say the winning the lottery factor. <laughs> if your rock star developer tomorrow wins the lottery and never comes back to work again, is your company gonna be fine? Hopefully. And one way that happens is when they mentor other people. This doesn't just have to be seniors mentoring juniors. Everyone can mentor everyone. You can have seniors mentoring mids, mids mentoring juniors. But this is a great way to spread knowledge around the company. And it's a great opportunity for leadership. Um, you get to learn how to lead that person that you're mentoring, which can lead to being a tech lead, to being a manager, to starting your own company. They ask forbidden questions. You know, sometimes we get a little nervous to ask questions. We think we should already know the answer to. Uh, frequently, junior developers will ask anything. They, they're like, why does this do this? What's here? Why does this look like this? And these questions are opportunities for the whole team to grow. Maybe, you know, you're a mid-level developer and you get to learn from the answers to that question. Maybe you're a senior and you kind of know the answer, but to really answer it, you need to go do some research first. There's a lot of memes out there about junior developers. Maybe you've seen this one. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> All right, we got him out, we got him out. Oh. That, that gosh darn junior developer, you know, just get out of the hole and get right back into it. <laughs> A lot of memes about junior developers have this kind of same uh, story of you know junior developers just getting stuck and stuck and deleting prod and whatever silly thing they get up to. <laughs> I want to reframe this. This is not a bug. This is a feature. <laughs> this is a feature. Why is this a feature? Um, every company has things that could be better about it. I call it company tech debt. You know, there is onboarding that can be improved, documentation that can be improved, there are structures, processes, everything has room for growth. And junior developers will fall into every single problem, every single gap, they'll find it. Um, if they didn't find it, it isn't for lack of trying. And this is an opportunity for us to improve this company tech debt. Now, of course, you're not going to improve everything, but maybe you find something that is particularly useful to fix. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I'm very sorry, James. Docs are always wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying we shouldn't do them. We should do them, and we should try to make them as good as we can. Laravel docs are really, really good. And there's a lot of other ones out there that are about as close to right as you can get. 
But the reason they're always wrong is they get out of date, they have assumptions built into them. We'll talk more about this in Cursive Knowledge, but the docs are always wrong and your junior developers are gonna find those wrong things. These things that are wrong with the company, these gaps, these process things that could be better, they affect everyone at your company. You senior developer that you hire are going to follow your docs for onboarding and they're gonna find those same issues. And maybe they can fix it because they have the experience and the tools to deal with it, but you're still wasting their time. And developer time is expensive. So if we find these problems and we improve them with the help of junior developers, we are saving future time. All right, Netflix has something called the chaos monkey. I don't know if you've heard about this. Um, I like to think that Netflix has automated junior developers. <laughs> what the Netflix chaos monkey does is it just turns off random servers and sees what happens. By doing this, they figure out what is wrong, uh, what it doesn't have redundancy, what is going to really mess up their system. And so they have really understood the value of this. So we should, we should learn from this. Maybe uh, we don't go to the automated junior developer first, but eventually maybe we can get there. All right, speaking of feature, not a bug, this was a recent thing going around Twitter about this junior developer who was setting up their local database, a test database, they're following the onboarding box docs. This is like day one. And um, on the onboarding docs, they have prod credentials. Yep, you know where this is going. Um, they deleted prod. And <laughs> this could have been a really great opportunity for the company and for the junior developer, but instead this, this junior developer is fired and uh, the CTO is threatening them with legal action. I think this was a big miss for this company as well as the junior developer. It is not their fault that there were prod credentials in the onboarding docs. I mean, I'm, I think Steven would be very upset with them. This is not secure. <laughs> you should not have prod credentials there and you shouldn't expect your junior developer to know what those are and not use them. Instead, what they could have done, feature not a bug, they could have gotten the junior developer involved with fixing the situation and updating the docs. All right, great seniors, where do they come from? Juniors, they have to start somewhere. A lot of companies would love to hire just senior developers, but that's hard to do, they're expensive and you know there's a limited pool. Um, so you can make your own great seniors from junior developers and you know, they can learn great, deep institutional knowledge about your company. They can know best practices for your company. And as long as you give them a reason to stay, they could be your best senior developers you've ever had. All right, I hope that you're a little bit more on board with hiring junior developers. Now let's talk about how we set them up for success and keep them. We're gonna talk about onboarding buddy and how that's useful, how to do ramp up work, mentorship and pairing, community, psychological safety, and how that relates to great managers. All right, onboarding is tough, uh, and docs are always wrong, like we talked about. Um, one of the most simple things to make onboarding better that I feel so few companies really take advantage of is just pairing off people with an onboarding buddy. This is so great for your junior developers, but it's great for anybody. It's so nice to have someone to go to to ask questions, to find institutional knowledge, figure out the company gaps. And together, you can work on improving those docs so they're about as close to right as they could be. All right, ramp up work. It really helps your junior developers to set aside work for them that is manageable, easy to work on, helps get them up and running and learn your process. My favorite ramp up work for any junior developer, like the first thing they should do is update the README. And through doing this, one, your docs get better, and two, they learn how does this work at your company? How do you do your branch naming? How do you make a PR? How do you do approvals or reviews? How do you deploy? How do you merge? All of these things they learn really quickly without being overwhelmed. And after you give them ramp up work, you wanna keep challenging them and giving them manageable work that can scale for them. All right, mentorship and pairing. These things go together extremely well. 
We talked about how mentorship is great for everyone. Let's talk about how that's great for junior developers. They will grow so much faster. They'll level up and be productive way quicker at your company if they have a mentor. Um, I did a survey before this talk, and I tried to get as many junior developers as possible to answer it. And through the survey, I found that 60% said mentorship and pairing helps them the most. Anyone, everyone can mentor. Um, get your junior developers mentoring the newer junior developers. They all have some. Uh, they all have really helpful things to share, and it's a great learning opportunity. Uh, use the mentoring and pairing to uh, break down pairing barriers. There's a lot of barriers to pairing at companies. One thing that my company did to make pairing a little bit easier is we have a Slack channel where we pair. It's called Shindigs. And before we had this channel, we would occasionally, we do sprints, we would occasionally have sprints where we had to do a lot of bug fixes, especially around the holidays, and they were awful. The morale went super low. It's just rough when all you're working on is bugs. But when we got this pairing channel, we crushed more bugs than we'd ever done before in a sprint like this. Morale was super up and people were super excited. And this is so useful for the company and so useful for your junior developers. They cannot, they won't be struggling on their own, feeling stuck, and get the mentors involved with this. Now, pairing is like its own talk. I'm like kind of stuffing it in here. It really needs more time, but I just wanna sell you a little bit more on pairing. They did a study uh, with Utah and found that there were 15% fewer bugs, which is really great, and fewer lines of code. NASA did a study, and two people who paired on a project uh, finished it with 914 lines of code. One person did the exact same project, and it was 2,200 and something lines of code. Now, fewer lines of code doesn't necessarily mean it's better. However, I would argue that's a way better PR to review. That's way more manageable. That's really helpful. And pairing can really level up your junior developers while also helping your company. All right, community. Um, never isolate your junior developers. Uh, Alex Six did a talk on mentorship at Laracon Online, and he said, nothing is worse than being stuck and alone. And this is so true. It's really rough when you're working on stuff and you have no one to go to. So on top of mentorship and pairing opportunities, make sure that you're not putting your junior developers on a project by themselves, very separate from a team. If they're on this project by themselves, separate from a team, no one else has context on what they're working on. There's no one sitting there working through those problems. It's so much harder to reach out and ask for help. And also think about not just isolating them on the work that you put them on, but also think about how you can avoid isolating them if they're from a diverse background. It's really rough when you know, you're, let's say, a woman, and you go to your team meetings, and there's no one that looks like you. Now, maybe you can't fix this right away, but one option is employee resource groups. Get together groups. Um, if you have to, just women at the company. But if you can do better, women in engineering. And even better than that, women on the team. Whatever you can do to create groups and community for your diverse background people, so that they can connect with people who know what they're experiencing without having to explain it. All right, um, managers. Google did a study that uh, was called Project Oxygen, and they found that the most successful, most productive teams were not the highest level of experience. They're the ones that had the most supportive managers, and the best levels of psychological safety. So that means your team that is just seniors, if they don't have a great manager and they don't have a lot of psychological safety, are not going to perform better than your team that has a lot of junior developers and great management. One thing I do want to talk about along with this psychological safety is that feedback is a gift. We talked about how junior developers find those gaps, and that is a feature, not a bug. To learn about those gaps, to learn how to fix them, 
you need to create psychological safety. Your junior developers are the most vulnerable people in your company, probably. They're the ones who can't just walk away and go find a new job. And so when they're giving feedback, they have to be worried about how you're going to take it. Is that going to go well? Are they going to get fired on their first day because they followed the onboarding docs that had prod credentials? And so you really need to think about power dynamics and how you can lower them. Giving them ways to do anonymous feedback is really helpful. And making them feel safe to ask questions, to work with other people, to get help, that's how you create psychological safety. All right, let's talk about what the curse of knowledge is. Uh, Susanna, who's the founder of Larabelle's and a wonderful person, she did a talk on the curse of knowledge at Laracon US. What the curse of knowledge is, is that the more you know, the easier it is to make assumptions. This is really relevant to docs and onboarding and all these things. Um, when you are writing documentation, there's so many things that you need to include. Some of that you're just going to skip because you don't even maybe think about it anymore. Maybe you know, you're letting the team know that you've added a new package and you just assume that they know they need to do a composer install, but maybe they don't. They're going to follow whatever documentation, tutorial, or talk you give extremely literally. So you need to think about what words you're using, what assumptions you're making, what gaps there are, what shortcuts there are that they're going to miss out on. Try and talk to them if you can while writing it or get feedback on it. Then you'll really realize where the, where the gaps are and where the curse of knowledge is coming into play. Be the senior you wish you had. I think for a lot of us, we can already think of some things that we wish we had uh, when we were a junior. But here's some tips from me. Check in on people, uh, junior developers especially, but anyone. Mentor is extremely helpful. Share your own struggles. How many people in here have dealt with imposter syndrome? Yeah, a lot of us. I'm not surprised by that, but some junior developers are extremely surprised by this. It's so helpful to let them know when you had to Google something and you didn't just remember it. It's so helpful to let them know when you had uh, trouble with something, when something tripped you up or was hard to deal with. Those things really help them feel like they're not the only one messing up. On the survey I did, 40% struggled with imposter syndrome and create a better path forward. I don't think a lot of us think that I want the next person to have a worse time than I did. Think of what got in the way of your path and try to remove that for the person coming after you. All right, we're going to look at a few survey stats. Um, one of them I really want to highlight is that 70% of the people pivoted into tech. It says 65.6, but the reason is because this green and purple are also different types of pivoting. So only 28.1% did not pivot. About 42% have had a mentor, 30% haven't, and 27 said maybe had a mentor. And then as far as their background, 33.3% and 33.3% were both self-taught or boot camp grads, and then only 12% have a degree in CES. I thought all of these numbers were very interesting. Um, let's talk about how it can go wrong. Some ways that it can go wrong is your junior stagnates, which is not good for the junior and not good for your company. Uh, junior leaves for another company, you lose out on your future great developer, or junior leaves tech. And I really want to talk about this one. If a junior developer leaves tech, we lose that voice. We lose that person contributing to our community um, and potentially less diversity, because as we talked about, junior developers have greater diversity right now than the higher levels. And on the survey, 70% of the people said they'd consider quitting tech, which breaks my heart a little bit and um, brings me to why I wanted to give this talk and why this means so much to me. Um, I almost left tech. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of this talk that I felt like tech wasn't for me originally, and I think that because so many of the people 
who I surveyed said that they pivot into tech, they probably have some similar feelings. They didn't choose tech first, which probably means that they weren't 100% sure that this place was for them. And when you don't feel like this place is 100% for you, and then it's very hard to be here, you don't get the support you need, and it's a struggle, it really makes you consider, maybe that was right. Maybe that voice I had when I started was correct, and tech isn't for me. However, I'm here today because of incredible mentors. I don't have time to mention all their names. I wish I did. But uh, the reason I'm on this stage right now is because they cared about me, they checked in with me, and they said yes when I asked for their help. Because of my amazing support network, and because I will no longer let anything stop me. I know that I deserve to be here and that tech is for me now. And that took a long time for me to feel comfortable saying that. I've spent a lot of time talking to not junior developers, so now let's talk to the junior developers. Dear juniors, here are some of my tips for how you can succeed and how this can go better for you. Ask for what you need. Uh, create a support system, take charge of your experience, publish your work, leave your job if you need, and you can make it. Ask for what you need. Companies don't automatically know what you need. They could guess, but they're not going to be as good at guessing as you are at knowing what you need. So please let them know that you would like an onboarding buddy. Please let them know you'd like a mentor, that you need more support, and ask them questions on what to do and what to work on, what you can do to get better. Find a support network. If they're telling you no to some of your requests, find it yourself if you can. Find your own onboarding buddy. Find your own mentors inside your company and outside. Find them in the wider community. Network. Go to meetups, conferences, find the online tech community, find people to help you and cheer you on. Laravels is a really fantastic community for uh, women and non-binary in the Laravel community. Take charge of your career. Keep track of your goals, your strengths, your opportunities. Take notes, tons of notes. I can't tell you how many times I look at my own notes almost every day, to remind myself of a really silly thing that I probably should be able to memorize, but one day. <laughs> and pair with everyone. I can't tell you how much this is super useful. When I join a new company, I make sure to pair with as many people as I can. One, I learn amazing things from this. And two, I figure out who is like a good fit for me. I narrow down that list to I find people who I ask to be my mentor because I know that we work really well together. Publishing your work. Uh, Aaron Francis gave an incredible talk at Laracon US about publishing your work, increasing your luck. Share what you're working on, share what you know, ask questions, be active online or in groups. Just find ways to sh publish your work and keep, communica keep communicating with those out there because it will help you find your community, it'll help you find your mentors, it'll bring opportunities to you, and it'll help you be more successful. I don't love giving this advice, but I feel like I have to. Sometimes you have to leave. You need to go where you can be successful. And sometimes leaving a job leads to positive changes at that job. I've definitely seen many jobs where someone leaves and then things improve for everyone who's still there. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> um, and you know, sometimes you're at a company at the wrong time for both of you. Maybe you're not the right fit for them and they're not the right fit for you, but later on you match up and it's a great time to go back to that company. So sometimes it's no now, but maybe later. And then you can make it. Uh, junior developers, you belong here. You're a valuable part of our community. Tech is better with you here. And I promise you, as someone who's gone a little bit further, it gets better. Keep in touch. Um, my name is Risha Jackson. This is all of my talk. Um, this QR code leads to my website. And you can uh, follow me on Twitter and talk to me. I'd love to hear 
thoughts, feedback, questions, have uh, talks about this. I really love this topic. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Rissa Bubbles, and it's on my website. I also very uh, last minute decided to create a Discord server yesterday. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but I called it Junior Dev Journeys. I had a lot of people on the survey let me know that they would like a mentor and they wanted to talk. And so I created this so that junior devs and early career devs could join and talk amongst themselves and with other people, and also for people who would like to help junior devs, mentor, um, share advice, support their journey. Um, so we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll make a community. Um, and I really would love to hear from all of you if you have any thoughts, feedback, or questions. So let me know. Thank you so much. Fantastic. That was a good round of applause for a great talk, but can we have a round of applause for a great talk from a first-time international speaker? <laughs> I've always wanted to do that, thank you. Um, this is one that perhaps you can't answer because it's more of a hiring question. Um, how should a company choose junior developers from a pool of applicants? Oh, it's a great question. It's tough because, you know, I feel like some of the markers that you look for from a senior developer are harder to find in a junior developer. But I think that um, those conversations that you have with them, like the kind of behavioral uh, interviews, the ones where you just talk to them, maybe do a panel, are opportunities to figure out how they think, what they're passionate about, why they're here, what they're excited about. And they can be really great signifiers for how they're gonna be at your company. It's a lot easier to take someone who's excited and passionate and um, just really wants to be here and make them a great developer than it is to take a great developer who doesn't wanna be here, is not excited, and really doesn't want this job. Excellent, that's a great answer. Um, this is an interesting, hairy one, and last one. Does juniors mentoring juniors reinforce bad habits? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I guess it could if it was um, in isolation, but I would hope that they're not mentoring each other and then having no other involvement from seniors, from other people who can help. Uh, I think that a really great opportunity of juniors mentoring juniors is to figure out for themselves what they don't know and then use that as an opportunity to go ask someone else together. Excellent. Well, thank you again, Rusa. Thank you.